Hello class, and today we will be going to Blight Town, which is the next area of the game, of course, also the location of the second Bell of Awakening. First, we have a few souls to spend, so go ahead and crank up your stats a bit. You could spend them on other things, but it's really not all that important, especially because Blight Town is really, really dangerous. So, like I said earlier in the previous video, I got really tired of long runs and talking over them, so I went ahead and sped up this bit. And uh, the slime slaying. Which got really tedious. So yeah, not quite sure why I decided to. But that nah, works. So there, just make sure nobody follows us. So talk to this guy too. You can spend your souls on on his some of his stuff if you want to. And here we are going to Blight Town. So, as you can see, there's no loot on any part of this circle. I just did a run around it just just cause. So Blight Town is everybody's least favorite area of the game. It's full of poisonous poisoning enemies, falling off cliffs in the first bit, f swamp stuff that makes you slower and you have to you have to then you get poisoned when you're in it and the lower section. So it can get really really annoying. So there is a very straightforward path to go through it if you want to. But uh I'm going to show you guys the side way. Now you might have noticed I just lost my human form and a few souls. It's because I died there by uh, getting killed from this guy, I believe. He is, his one of his attacks, as you can see, the knock you back. I actually got knocked off a cliff by one of them. As I'm about to do to this guy, he can make them fall off cliffs. So the trick with these guys is, is to lure them back to you. See, I totally missed that. So generally, by just backtracking, you can get out of range of most of their attacks. But there's a few that you have to be careful of. So they're, they're using a large poisoned club, which is quite dangerous. As you can see, that took away a large chunk of our health and very nearly poisoned us. But well, poison does not do much damage as compared to toxin. It's still pretty dangerous and should be watched out for. It's a dung pie. When you throw it in an enemy, it toxin it increases their toxin meter, but it also increases yours. So keep that in mind. So that's one way to get them. But they have this weird thing of just sitting there and roaring for a while. I'm gonna switch to my heavy arrows. My heavy bolts, which do a little more damage. But overall this weapon just isn't worth using unless you're just one need a ranged option. As you can see, heady head on attacking is not a very smart idea. And you should never backtrack to get yourself between them and the cliff, because they will knock you off. These guys should be easy to backstab, but apparently they're a little harder to backstab than I thought they were. Still, you can get some pretty pretty easy ones there. And there's another dung pie. So, you might notice dart sounds in the background soon. This is from a toxic dart thrower person dude. He has a he has darts that instantly toxin you if they hit you. You might have seen that dart there. I was in attack, so it didn't really affect me. The toxin is a much more dangerous form of poison that drops your health like a rock. So it's really not a good idea to just sit there and let the toxin go. But the only way they can be cured is is from a much rarer variant of the purple moss clump, the blooming purple moss clump. So you can make it right here. As you can see, if he hits you while you don't while you don't have a shield up, you get toxic. I actually died here, so I had to edit out a part of the video. So these guys can be backstabbed fairly easy, fairly easily too, but they are kind of annoying. They're basically just a harder variant of the hollow soldiers. They hollow people, whatever. They uh, they have an annoying grab attack too. They uh, they grab you and then they just eat at you for a while. If you die while well, getting eaten, you have to sit around a while while they numb on your body for who knows how long. So I actually died a lot in this first bit, but after this bit, I don't think I died once. So I don't need to worry about poor editing anymore. So I'll climb up the ladder, and here we are. So there's a lot of secondary routes and side paths in this area. I'm going to show most of them, but I might not go down all of them. I'm going to try to go the main way. 
So then there's an item that I didn't don't actually think I grabbed, but it's there. That was an example of their grab attack. If they had actually hit you, it would be really, really annoying. So this way hander is very easy to chain. So that bridge to the right there is rickety. It uh, creaks a bit sometimes. And it, it, it is quite easy to get knocked off of. There's another one of those side paths. And this is this guy. As you can see his attacks do some pretty moderate damage, but not terribly bad. So you can go ahead and take some Estus, just to be safe. They generally drop soul items. So expect to get a few extra souls whenever you kill one that drops an item. So this is a side path that I'm going to go down later because I really want to show you guys the main path first. So, no side paths here. So be wary of death. This area is notorious for its frame rate drops in other versions and other such things like that. So, there's some, a lot of narrow bridges in Upper Blade Town, which is the area we're in, characterized by these big, uh, big bridges and such. So, they have a little kick attack too. Knocks your shield down and does very little damage, but it staggers you. So there you go. So go ahead and uh, run down this way. And now I think I'm going to go show you guys that item that was there. Because that is a dead end. So, run back here. If you want, if you want to, you could have just gone this way earlier, I think. And uh, if you guys remember, go up the ladder. There's quite a few ladders in this area, but uh, oh, overall, it's actually kind of dull unless you try to find your way. But it, it's generally wise to have some sort of a map or some other guide. But this works. That is the shadow set. It's basically even lighter than the thief set, and it has better re poison resistance. Basically, it's for ninjas, which I think is awesome, because ninjas are cool. There's a little item down to the right there, but we'll get that later, because there's a bonfire off this way. So, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and grab that item down there. So, you won't fall off, don't worry. It's just some more souls. We're going to have a overabundance of soul items after we're done here. So, I'm going to try to sneak across this bridge, but no such luck. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and... No. You can roll off that edge if you want. It leads to an area. It leads to this big bridge place. Apparently being a little indecisive. So, yeah. There we go. And you're going to want to run back this way because... Lo and behold, a bonfire. This is the first bonfire in Blight Town. The other one is at the very bottom. So let's go ahead and use a few of our soul items. As you can see, the soul of the Proud Knights are 2,000 apiece. So that's pretty nice. And we can uh, still get quite level up. It's getting to be really expensive. So let's go ahead and consume a few extra souls here. And, uh, this one. Let's just, uh, get rid of this one, too, because it's there, and we don't like it being there. So now we have an Endurance 21, we're level 38. So we're actually getting pretty high. So let's spend our remaining souls on repairing our heavily damaged equipment. I'm mean, really low on durability, yeah, it's a little scary. So anyway, this is the wrong way, actually believe. So, yeah, you can slide down this ladder if you want. I believe this gives me an opportunity to show you guys ladder combat, or not. I'm just going to do a plunging attack. So, there. Uh, only one hit, but it's still one hit. So, yeah, these guys do have plenty of damaging and shield to stamina depleting attacks, so 
But other than that, they have no poise at all, so it's very easy to stagger them with any weapon available. Even your fists, sometimes. So this path can be a little annoying because of camera angles. There's some blooming purple moss clumps, the only thing that can cure toxin. So that's quite nice. There might actually be some items in this area that I don't end up getting. So you guys can feel free to explore a bit if you want. Now this is the that that is the creakiest bridge in the game right there. So you walk on it and it immediately starts sliding. It's supposed to give you a feeling of being on a very like narrow worn down bridge because it is the ruins of Blight Town, so. But uh, other than that, if, if you know how to do it and you just stay still for most of the time, it really isn't that bad. So, go ahead and run down here. So, for the most part, you don't actually really have to watch most of this video. It, but, uh, uh, well, it, it is important to know the way to go, but most of the items are for other builds. There's only one item in here that you really need, and it's kind of on the main path. So we'll get to that later when we get it. So... I don't actually remember most of the ways here in the Blight Town anyway, myself. So, it's a pretty hard to remember area because it's so twisty and turny and everything kind of looks the same. So, yeah, go ahead and run up here. Sorry if I'm pausing too much, there just isn't all that much to say. So, running up on past the creaky bridge again. Going back is a lot easier than going there. See, so I almost fell off, being too hasty. I really like the sound effects on that one. So anyway, go ahead and go back up this long ladder. So while you're on a ladder, your right bumper and left trigger, or whatever the equivalents are on the PS3, or light attack and heavy attack, are used for punches and kicks above and below you respectively. Basically, they deplete your opponent's stamina and do a little bit of damage. When said stamina is all the way down, your opponent will fall off the ladder. And then from there you are free to do a plunging attack, which is quite nice. So. Yeah, make use of ladder combat. Go ahead and run up here. And, uh, here we are. There's another guy in a barrel there. This gives you an opportunity to do a mist attack there. As you can see, that uh, push attack there actually staggers you. So don't ignore when they do that. You can see when they're in the barrel, they actually take less damage, so... Don't expect the three hit one in the barrel. So yeah. Go ahead and run back here now. So let's run down this path a bit. And look where we are. We've already been here. So that means we should be able to return back to the bonfire and show you guys the actual main path. So you can see the floor fell away. It's a trap meant to trick anyone who's aiming to get that item there and explores a bit more, like for illusionary walls and stuff. The floor falls away and you're dropped to the next level. Actually, another area that's even worse about that is the Great Hollow. It's full of titaniate chunks and magic rings and soul items, but they all require you to drop off roots and uh, land on other smaller roots to get special items. So you can see this message was right. It was a dead end. Let's go ahead and call and fall down this here. So yeah, and there's this guy. Almost grabbed us there, but I'm not about to show you guys that. I do believe I actually did get grabbed once and killed in this video or later here. So these guys are pretty annoying. They have, I think they might have a bleed effect, but I'm pretty sure it's just no, no, no effects at all. But they're really annoying to hit if you don't have a weapon that has a low enough strike. So go ahead and... there's this bridge. So this is the way to go here. And there's another toxic dark guy. 
Nemesis darts can be very, very annoying. So, especially if you actually manage to get hit directly right up next to him, because that's when the toxin takes its full effect. So here we are, walking across this bridge. I think that I think that rickety bridge was the only rickety one in the entire game. So I believe I've actually got toxined and uh, toxined and then bitten. So I so I was pretty much dead. So here's this item. It's a soul of a proud knight, and uh, you can go ahead and uh, walk down this way. If you're hearing any background noise, just go ahead and ignore it. Don't need to worry about too much. As you can see, the kicks don't take, uh, don't do much stamina, don't do much damage, but the main effect is stamina. As you can see, I knocked him off the ladder. So, as you can see, I just got toxic. And I got bitten. So, yeah, that did not end well. And then I got bitten again. So apparently, and as you can see, he's continually nibbling on me. So there, apparently, I forgot to edit out that death. Ah well, to shows you guys, even I'm not invincible, even though I've played this game like through twice on two different playstyles. So yeah. Probably could have done a bit more editing. Ah well. What's done is done, and what's in the video is in the video. At least you got to showcase the bite attack too, so that's nice. And ladder combat in the same video. So there, it's that guy. You can go ahead and climb down here. And uh, get retrieved from the last death. So when you block it with a shield, it actually takes less poison damage. So those guys fall really easily, and they give you some kind of poison curing thing generally. I don't seem to remember one giving me any blooming ever, but it's a guaranteed drop. They always give you something. I mean, it's directly to your inventory, too, so you don't need to worry about finding the body anywhere. Plus, they don't respawn. So this is the Eagle Shield. This is the shield we'll be using for the rest of the game, actually. Well, I am a little disappointed because in the last patch, they removed the physical resistance down to 95, but the stability is still ridiculously high and the resistances are pretty good. Plus, it looks really awesome. So, the 95% resistance really isn't all that much of a factor. Basically, it just means if you take something that dr if you take damage that drains your shield all the way and staggers you, you'll probably take a little more damage, like a like a bit off your health. So it it encourages you to not just sit there and block everything, and encourages you to get out of the way. So I believe it's good training for new players like you to avoid heavy attacks and stuff like that, but to block the lighter ones. As you can see. We might have taken a little tiny bit of damage, you can barely see. It's like a poison effect or something. But it's there, and it can be dangerous if you, t if you take too much of it. So basically, just this just increases the importance of our Estus Flask. The stability is so much higher, and the final stability is really ri so ridiculously high, it's, it's just totally worth uh, the 95% resistance. So here's this guy. So go ahead and get rid of him. Take our purple moss clump that we rightfully earned. And uh, here's a little crow's nest area, I guess. It's a nice little place. So through this way, you might have noticed the blobby thing earlier in the video down to the left of the little balcony overlooking it. It is actually guarding something. If you get too close, you will probably die. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a side route and get behind it so that we can access the pyromancy that it is guarding, Power Within. I'll talk to you guys more about that when we get it. As you can see, here it is. So when you hit it, you might not see a health bar. That's because the health bar actually occurs above him, way above him. But you are doing damage to him, so you don't need to worry about that. So, there's another hit. Uh, I think, as you can see, the health bar is up there. And there! This guy doesn't respawn either. A uh, thousand souls, no special loot except this baby here. Power Within is a favorite among PvP duelers and glass cans and stuff, people like that. Basically, it slowly drains your health, 
but in return, you are you are get an increased amount of uh, heavily increased amount of damage, along with maybe some extra health or something or defense. Not entirely sure, but I, I do know you get a huge damage boost in return for a steady drain of your health. So that's pretty nice. So in the next video, I believe we'll be, we will be using the large ember because at the bottom is a shortcut to Firelink. So that's pretty nice. You may have you may remember us using it to get to Crimson Set earlier. If you continued that route, once you got the Crimson Set, you would actually come out at the bottom of Blight Town. So that is one way to go if you do not want to go through the Upper Blight Town or the Depths. Or Lower Undeadburg, for that matter. It's quite a skipper. So, I'm going to go ahead and go down this ladder here. You might see that body down to the lower, lower left there. It is the Whip. I'll talk to you guys more about that when we get that. But for now, let's go ahead and go through this Fog Gate. And uh, there's, there's a lot of those thrown around just to mess with you guys. You could have actually skipped that fog gate entirely if you had wanted to. So, so down we go, and up we go. So this is actually where the whip drop, as I'm going to call it, let lands. So let's go ahead and uh, go back up and grab the whip. Because this is a walkthrough, and I show you guys everything possible. Well, there are, are, are more videos that are more direct and to the point. This is a walkthrough video, as I've already said, so... Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, run through here. So what you do is you just drop down to it. It's pretty simple. You would take a little damage, but it's worth it. The whip. It's a completely and totally dex-oriented weapon, surprisingly enough. And it has a pretty nice moveset, but from what I understand, it cannot critical. Like, backstab or anything. Let's just show you guys the moveset really quick. It's sort of spearish. It has a whip attack, like that. Standard whip. And then it has a quick, cool little swirl attack. But to overall, as you can see, it scales completely in dex, and... It's entirely focused on this on deck scaling, so yeah, we're just gonna stick with the sway hander. So as you can see, one heavy attack is enough to get rid of these guys, even though their chaos flame attack is a little bit uh, damaging. Just kill them before they can attack you, and it's pretty simple. Enemies that you can one hit are always a little easier to beat. So you can go ahead and run down here and uh, keep going. So what you can do is you can run up this way. So we are nearing the bottom. So there's that guy. And that's one of the very last toxic dart guys. There is an area in the next video that I will show you that does contain about four at once, which is pretty annoying. There's the Wander set, along with the Falcoin, or the Falchoin, or however you, however you pronounce that. Basically, it's light armor. Well, it, it's heavyish light armor, but it's light armor. And the Falchoin... Some, somebody tell me how to pronounce that, but... It's a chain dex weapon. It focuses on chaining attacks together as much as possible. And staggering and stuff. You may have noticed the mosquito enemies I killed earlier. Those guys are really, really, really annoying if you have a weapon that has a set path like this way hander and you can barely hit them so the most effective method is to simply use the uh, heavy crossbow and the heavy bolt which I'm about to show here one hit kill from distance and you never have to worry about getting close to them or anything so that is the most effective method in my opinion so the next section of the video after I get down into the bonfire at the bottom here will be entirely me just running around the swamp and picking up a few extra items that I will show you guys. So there's that guy. More mosquitoes. They are safe to ignore. They infinitely spawn and they give a very small amount of souls and no loot at all, so generally you can ignore them. So there's an item here. As you can see, our poison meter pretty much stays at full. And that guy gave us a humanity. Huh. So anyway, 
we'll pretty much be poisoned whenever we stand in the swamp. It's so tiny, it's not even, it's barely even worth mentioning. But, like I said earlier, it's there, so keep that in mind. The rusted iron ring helps us move much faster in the swamp, which will greatly speed up the length of this video. So, it actually to speed up a large chunk of it, but, well, I can manage to tone it down from almost 40 to 32, so that's pretty nice. Actually, 33, but yeah. So if you go ahead and run up here, there is a dragon scale in this chest. It is used to upgrade dragon weapons like the Drake Sword, the Dragon Great Sword, which will be we sh we we will be getting next video. The Dragon King Great Axe, the Obsidian Great Sword, I think. There's there's quite a few dragon weapons, and they're all like tail weapons in some form. So yeah. Now that we have that, uh, it's time to go explore the swamp at 2.5x speed. But first, there is one more NPC encounter I have to show you guys. And while we're here, we might as well get, go ahead and kindle the bonfire. You might find some screenshots of a neat little glitch where, where while resting at this bonfire, your foot will actually extend upwards and kind of hover over the bonfire. It's like yoga. It's an interesting little glitch. I've got to work a couple times myself, but you no, know, I completely forgot about it while filming. So yeah, I'm gonna kill a few enemies here. The phantom encounter here is called Maneater Mildred. She's uh, uh, actually entirely naked except for a sack over her head. She's a butcher's cleaver and a plank old plank shield. So that's a uh, nice little touch there. Like it's a swamp, so there's gotta be crazy people, right? Another nice little bit about Manny to Mildred is when you kill her, she will actually help you with the Quelog boss fight. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. So I actually had to wait a while, and eventually decided maybe I should move out a bit here into the swampy area. Poison, but it's really tiny, so you don't need to worry about it too much. Still waiting. Hello. So sometimes she's a little fickle with invading, but I do get her to invade in this video. So these leeches have two very common drops that I would like to showcase. Oh, there's Manny de Mildred. Basically, they drop large titanium shards one at a piece, and they drop green titanium shards five at a time. So it would be nice to farm these guys, but I kind of already got enough green titanium shards to get a pretty high level fire great great scythe anyway, and enough to upgrade our eagle shield and our sway hand. So there's Mildred. She's pretty easy to backstab, and as I said earlier, she's not wearing any clothes except a sack. So, yeah. Now that that's over with, every phantom has a humanity, a bunch of souls. And the NPC phantoms all have some kind of a special item, like a few extra humanity or a butcher knife in this case, which is a pretty nice strength weapon. So yeah, but it's not quite nearly as nice as these Wayhander. So I sped up this bit, I believe, to 2.5, because it's basically just me running around the swamp. So no sped up music here because Blight Town has no music, pretty much, except it's boss fights. You can go ahead and kill this guy. And this uh, this area has a lot of leeches in it, and they have a pretty annoying, like, sw swing themselves at you attack, but you can one-hit them, so it's pretty easy. Even with the light attack. So, here he dropped one large titanium at shard. So there's that. And there's a two-in-one. This is another large titanium at shard, so we have two, that's enough to get the eagle shield and the Zway Hander to plus, two plus six, so we can upgrade them on our own. Alright, poison again. And this guy. So there's that guy, and then that guy. And then that guy. And this is the server weapon, or sever or something, I don't know. But basically, it's just like the butcher's knife, except more uh, 
dex thing, and it actually drains HP with each hit you, you do. It's another large... So, every hit, you drain a little bit of HP when you're using that weapon. It's kind of nice, but overall, the damage is so tiny, it's not really worth it. The same effect goes to Smoke's Hammer, which is the highest strength acquiring weapon in the game. So that is the path to the Great Hollow up there. We got five Great Titanium Shards from that guy, so that's plenty. The path to the Great Hollow is a path we will follow in the next video, which leads to the Ash Lake and a few other things. So there's six Green Titanium Shards now. So the it, we will be returning, we will be going to the Great Hollow and Ash Lake in the next video, along with the boss fight of the of the uh, of the Blight Town. So, which is a Chaos Legend, known as Quilog. But we'll get to that more when we actually fight her, of course. So you don't actually have to do all this running around. There's actually nothing useful here, pretty much, except the Great Club which is the item that these guys are guarding. These guys are really annoying. I don't think I died to them at all, but still, they are really annoying. So yeah, you gotta be really careful when you're fighting these guys. So we can focus on fighting the other one. So the Great Club is reputedly the best strength weapon in the game. I can't vouch for that because I've never actually used it. But it's it's pretty nice. It has highish scaling and pretty nice base damage and a fairly nice move set. But uh, I'm not going to demonstrate any of those because it's a pretty high strength requirement. So there is the great club right there. It has pretty high damage and a good strength scaling that gets much better as you level it up. So now we're going to run around a bit more, just in the middle. If you had talked to the Pyromancer that we rescued from the depths already, and gotten the Pyromancy Flame, there would be another person here that's a Quilana, I think. She is also a Chaos Witch, and she teaches you highly advanced Pyromancies. So the bonfire actually cut out on me a bit here, because apparently someone was trying to invade me or something, but they failed, so you don't need to worry about just missing any PvP or anything. So let's consume a few of those soul items we got while exploring around. So these are worth 3,000 souls. I'm get a couple levels off this. So there's 9,000. That's 11,000. There's 12,000. 12,400 souls just lying around for the taking. So yeah. That's enough for one level. <laughs> so anyway, that should be it for today. I'll see you guys in the episode where we visit Ash Lake and the Great Hollow. And that's all for today. Class is dismissed. <laughs>